top of the morning to you, friends. Though I suppose it's not necessarily morning time in your neck of the woods. My name's Ollie, and here's your loaf of daily bread. For today's loaf, we give thanks to the physicist, Max Planck, who says the following. As a man who has devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science, to the study of matter, I can tell you as a result of my research about atoms this much. There is no matter. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Despite growing up without religion, I was always fascinated by the Bible and the idea of God. Fascinated, because I could never understand how intelligent, rational adults could ever subscribe to the biblical concept of God as an invisible, bearded sky daddy. Despite denying this God's existence, I nevertheless felt that there must be some higher power. I just didn't know what this higher power was or what it resembled. Until I discovered Marcus Aurelius and pantheism, I had no working model of what the highest power looked like. Thanks to good old Marcus, I discovered a concept of God that resonated instantly. And it's this concept which Max Planck is talking about. There are many names for this concept of God. In China, it's the Tao. In India, it's the Brahman. To the Stoics, it was the Logos, with a capital L, the divine universal reason. Regardless of what the ancients and the moderns call it, the description of this highest power is always very, very similar. And it's often associated with nature, or at least the laws of nature, which from a certain perspective can be seen to give matter its shape, form, and functionality. Everything that is tangible, everything that exists, is the result of these natural forces these laws, which can be broken down to four basic ones. Gravity, electromagnetism, the weak and the strong nuclear forces. From these four natural laws, everything in the universe arises and is. Pretty crazy, isn't it? So for me, at the very least, the laws of nature correspond to the laws of God. When a hardcore scientist like Max Planck talks about this kind of stuff, or when Albert Einstein talks about his concept of a God, we should all take note because these are people who were dedicated to the scientific method. People who are dedicated to experimentation, observation, and forming conclusions based on these. We're talking about creative, calculating minds that revolutionize the way we understand nature and the universe. So we should definitely take heed. Max Planck, Albert Einstein, Werner Heisenberg, these are not yokels. These are not ignoramuses. These are not bearded prophets who just came out of the wilderness and started spouting off. They dedicated their lives to the scientific method, to finding out the true nature of things. And they all came to very similar conclusions about the existence of God. Again, not the biblical Judeo-Christian bearded sky daddy, but this highest power that cannot be named. We call it God because we don't have a name for it, and rightfully so, because no name could adequately capture and describe this thing. The force that holds the atom together and that keeps it spinning the right way, the force that brings stars together and causes them to 
exhaust their fuel and burst and seed matter into the rest of the universe. The force that drives the evolution of all things, whether it be elements or life forms, that's the force that I'm talking about when I refer to God. That's the force that Einstein was talking about when he referred to God. And if Max Planck ever used the G word, this is what he would be referring to as well. This cosmic consciousness, this universal mind. You really have to disconnect from the Judeo-Christian idea of God in order for this to make sense and in order for it to resonate. Your existence is proof of a higher power. The fact that your body assembled itself in the womb with help from your mother is proof of a higher power. You didn't do it yourself. You don't even keep your own heart beating. Your body does that. And your body does that because it has an intelligence that is inherent to it. It's not your intelligence. It's not like you're thinking, all right, keep beating heart, keep beating heart. Your body has a mind of its own. It has an intelligence of its own. It has been programmed by God. And it is a fragment of God itself. I guess the takeaway for me is that you can be a rational, intelligent, and deep thinking person and still believe in God. It's not a black or white proposition, my friends. You can worship God without worshiping the Judeo-Christian God. You can recognize the divine without subscribing to the Bible. You can acknowledge a higher power without having to sacrifice your critical thinking and logical skills. And in fact, I would say that logic and reason will bring you to the divine if you follow it long enough. That's the mistake many of us make. We reach a certain point that is comfortable and we stop seeking. If you continue to dig and to really ponder the nature of the things that you discover in your, in your seeking, I think you will reach a very similar conclusion to that of Max Planck, Albert Einstein, and Werner Heisenberg. Remember, the universe is not only stranger than we think, it's stranger than we can think. We can't even conceive of the true nature of things. With the scientific method, we can peel back the layer of sensory illusion and get down to the mechanics a bit more efficiently, but we're still only scratching the surface. So I guess for me, this is a reminder to stay humble and to constantly reaffirm the Socratic paradox, remind myself that I know nothing. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Live well.